Hello there! Did you know that you can go and edit the existing property definitions and value lists in MFALS admin tool? Well, at least some of them. I'll show you what I mean in a bit. Let's jump straight in. If you've seen the adding a new property definition and value list video, then this one is going to be a walk in a park for you. First of all, you can rename the property definitions just by, well, renaming them, and also choose a new data type from the list. You can even choose a new value list. Easy, right? You could also go and make the definition available for a certain object type. This shows that when you create a new property definition, it is not locked, so to speak, so that you wouldn't be able to go back and change things. Remember when I said that you can edit at least some of the definitions? Modifying the built-in property definitions is restricted. This means that you are not able to change the name, the data type, or the value list of the definition. Now, when it comes to deleting property definitions, there are three things that can happen. Either you are not allowed to delete the definition, which applies to built-in property definitions, or you are warned that the definition is associated with a class or several classes, or you are asked if you are sure you want to delete it. Of course, you can delete a definition that is associated with a class, but it's good to keep in mind that this affects the metadata of existing objects of the class. Next, let's see what we can do with the value lists. Modifying value lists may be an important admin task, especially if Vault users are allowed to add new value list entries themselves, so the admin has the duty to remove any duplicates or fix typos in the value list items. When deleting the items from the list, you have the wonderful option of undeleting them. How about that? Also, if the admin doesn't want to allow all users to add new values to the list, the value list permissions can be adjusted so that only certain departments or users are allowed to add new values. And finally, you can convert the value list into an object type if needed. If there is a need to describe the value list items with additional metadata or a need to attach files to them, it makes sense to convert the value list to an object type. And that's pretty much it for this video. I hope I was able to give you some good tips and tricks that will help you in your daily work. But since you're here, may I recommend you watch another video to learn more amazing things you can do. See you there.